Hello everyone. Thank you to all the people who attend this webinar today. Let me introduce myself. I'm Rena Krefa, communications uh, at uh, Actronica. Uh, Actronica is a company co-founded by Vincent Hayward, Gilles Meyer, and Rafael Pijuski, and dedicated to helping its clients achieve excellence in the development of haptics interfaces. I'm delighted to be with uh, Vincent Hayward today, uh, who will uh, present the, the webinar. For those who don't know him yet, Vincent is professor at Sorbonne University. He is a fellow of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers Organization and also a member of the French Academy of Sciences. He was recognized for for his pioneering work in haptics and exceptional contributions to science. He designed numerous devices to stimulate the skin, which gave rise to dozens of patents and the creation of Actronica. Let me walk you through the basics. We have several senses, you know that. Hearing, vision, olfaction, taste, and the sense of touch. Senses work in an integrated manner to give us a stable perception of the world around us. Today, Vincent will speak of the sense of touch and how the science of touch can guide us to creating practical applications of haptic interfaces. After the, the webinar, Vincent will be doing a live Q&A. The link is in the description of this video below. And uh, so after the, the webinar, click on it if you want to join the, the Q&A session. Vincent, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much, Marina, uh, for uh, your introduction. and. Um, Without uh, waiting, let's let's uh, get into the thick of the matter. And I have divided uh, the um, uh, uh, webinar into four uh, sections. First one is, is the longest. Uh, <coughs> and we'll be talking about the mechanics of touch, which is, uh, uh, if you want, the origin of our tactile sensations, where uh, the fun uh, fundaments, actually, where... Uh, 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 Sensation arise. Where, uh, <coughs> we'll be uh, in the second part uh, uh, briefly talking about uh, our nervous system. Uh, um, if you want the uh, machinery, neural machinery that that uh, let us feel things. Uh, uh, in the third section, we'll talk uh, uh, also briefly, unfortunately, about uh, some behavioral uh, uh, aspect of touch, uh, like, like uh, how conscious uh, sensation uh, uh, arise. And a good way to do this is through uh, uh, tactile illusions. It's, it's actually a window on, on how our brain works. Um, and, and, uh, and we'll finish with also a short section on, on, on how we can map these ideas into, into technology. <coughs> Uh, tactile mechanics. So when we uh, um, we have hands and the hands are uh, deformable objects, they, they have muscle. I mean, they can move, but they also have uh, uh, tissues around our, around our skeleton, which uh, and these tissues are, are very very uh, soft and very uh, deformable. So whenever you grab an object, essentially, what happens is the hand has, has a shape. Uh, it has a certain uh, configuration and whenever it, co it comes in contact with with an object that it changes its configuration uh, and, and that is done through uh, uh, the uh, load that is applied to the tissue and and, and, and then uh, what happens it creates a what's called a, a contact surface which is in the case of, of, uh, of human fingers or primate fingers in general is is, is a very large 
uh, area compared to the size of her hands. Actually, you, uh, if you if you grab an object and then for a fraction of a newton, you'll have a centimeter square per phalange of uh, of, of uh, contact. And this is apparent contact. We'll see. Actually, it's not so simple. Uh, and, and then uh, so that that's what, actually where that's where the sensation comes from. And and then um, it's the way that the hand has changed shape. It and and uh, the, um, uh, this change of shape, of course, is picked up by, by um, 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 nervous receptors, which are uh, inside the skin and also in the muscles. Uh, and and uh, we'll be talking about them a little bit later. <clears throat> but the second thing that happens when you uh, touch an object, in general, is that it creates friction. Essentially, the uh, uh, Objects in contact are reluctant to slide. They they tend to uh, stay together at at, at uh, uh, zero speed, zero sliding speed, and that's that's friction. It it really prevents motion, and and uh, uh, that that uh, actually allows us to walk and, and to hold objects. But if you insist and you uh, load the contact uh, 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 sufficiently, then it it starts sliding. Uh, <coughs> So and that's 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 uh, a dynamic friction, and and of course uh, during sliding a, a whole set of new phenomena are taking place, and that's a uh, no, second a very important source of uh, uh, tactile information. And the third case also, which is uh, uh, totally critical, is is whenever you put your fingers on an object, then there's a collision that takes place. Uh, uh, even at, at slow speed, it's still a, it's still a collision or an impact. If you want, the finger makes against the object, and that also causes a, a mechanical activity in your fingers, which creates uh, 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 tactile inputs, if you want, which are uh, consciously uh, uh, turned into into uh, uh, percepts. So let's let's look at uh, uh, a, a small detail. Actually, here you have a. a my finger, actually, which I imaged with an ordinary camera and a, a small, uh, simple optical setup, which uh, makes you um, uh, visualize, actually, this, this apparent contact that the finger makes against an object. In the case, the object is, is a sheet of glass. But, but the trick here is that I have put a small one millimeter um, uh, uh, bead, actually, between my finger and the glass. And then you can uh, immediately observe that the consequence of that very small object are very uh, remarkably large. Actually, it's like if you look at the crater, it's like uh, it's like a six millimeter in, in in diameter, whereas the object that caused it is is only one millimeter. <coughs> and and so uh, uh, that's that's very much characteristics of, of the. Um, uh, Mechanics of touch, actually, the, what small things, if you want, have big consequences uh, in space and also in time, as we'll see uh, later. So, so there is no, um, if you want, uh, easy, uh, 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 applicable principle of locality. E even local uh, uh, object in space have consequences on, on, on a large portion of space on our body. Uh, uh, statically, as, as it's shown here, but also dynamically, as we'll see uh, uh, a little later. And in time, of course, because actually our uh, uh, anatomy is such that the mechanical perturbation tend to, uh, um, if you want, propagate and then last quite a bit of time. So that's, that's also something to uh, uh, account for, and we'll see examples of that and how the brain takes advantage of it. Uh, I, um, uh, that's that's an old uh, 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 paper. That's actually a recording that was made by Vincent Levesque, who was uh, working towards his masters way back then at Miguel. And uh, uh, we were interested in in looking at how the the skin moves when you you uh, touch objects. And and then of course because uh, uh, glass is uh, is transparent, we use glass. And, and then that's what happens, actually. You can see from this uh, recording here that, that when you slide your finger on glass, uh, 
the skin doesn't slide in a simple manner. It actually adopts uh, 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 interesting dynamics, uh, uh, which actually here are quasi-static. So there is no 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 influence, if you want, of, of the relativity. It's the dynamics are quasi-static, uh, but they are nonetheless uh, 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 very uh, uh, complex. But what's totally remarkable is that uh, uh, if you want, this movie sh gives you an idea of, of the information that your brain is aware of when, when you're, uh, you're touching glass and sliding on it. But consciously, what, what, what you really experience is, is basically two, two aspects. One is a material. There is no doubt it's glass. Uh, uh, it, when you put your fingers on your telephone, you feel it's a glassy, glass, glass uh, surface. It's not wood. It's not uh, <coughs> stone. It's, it's glass. But also, uh, 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 in the second example here, I move in a different manner. So, so it's, it's sort of a rotary uh, movement, and and then these dynamics are, are uh, 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 very different, apparently different. But what's uh, extraordinary is that actually what you feel, still it's still glass and it's still flat, and and but the peripheral input uh, uh, is is apparently quite different. So so what what the brain is doing here is actually extracting uh, uh, properties about what uh, uh, of the external object from this movement and discounts. Uh, 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 all kind of perturbations, and 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 this is an example. One perturbation is actually the way you move, and it really influences the way the skin receives information. And yet, you have this constant uh, uh, sensation, which is independent from from this all this perturbation, and that that's something which is uh, uh, remarkable across all senses of the uh, brain's ability to extract uh, a, a relevant aspect. Of, of, of the world, which are useful for uh, telling what it is, and, and then take out, if you want, or discount all the perturbations that are not informative. Uh, so this is known as constancy. There are lots of examples of that in touch, in audition, in vision, and, and, and taste. Uh, 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 but, but here we have a, a very uh, beautiful example of it. Uh, and and, and uh, that gives us hope, actually, that um, it's possible to make uh, uh, plausible haptic interfaces, if you want, if, if you are able to, to uh, uh, create a machine that, that gives the information that's ne needed, and, and then the brain will discount, if you want, all the, the, the wrong aspect of it, and, and then you will still experience the correct, uh, have the correct experience. So that 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 is the the trick is to know what these constancies are in touch in order to take advantage of them to uh, uh, create effective uh, uh, interfaces. Uh, in the next slide, <coughs> uh, I'll I'll show also a movie which was uh, made a long time ago by uh, uh, the authors at the bottom of the slide here. Uh, and, and it but has inspired me uh, uh, all these years, and it's. What it, it shows actually is 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 um, is how um, a small a small punch, which moving uh, which is moving here at the rate of, of a, a hundred uh, and twenty oscillations per second, and it impacts the skin. And if you look clear carefully, uh, look closely, actually, what you see is is actually this wave that that emanates from the impact, and then and then uh, propagates uh, uh, all around. And, and so that's that's actually quite quite uh, uh, interesting, and then that uh, gives you a second example of, of this uh, non-local uh, uh, aspect of tactile inputs, and and how uh, the neural machinery that we have is is uh, geared to remove them, actually to to discount uh, this non-locality, because what you would feel actually if you had a little punch like this. Uh, uh, impinging on your skin uh, at the rate of uh, 120 uh, uh, impacts per second, you would actually feel a small point, uh, uh, a small vibration at a small spa space, where in fact the uh, uh, 
perturbation that propagates over uh, large distances, and that's necessary. Uh, that's that's the nature of mechanics. That's the the way they are, and there is nothing you can change. Uh, <coughs> so that uh, also gives us an idea in terms of designing uh, good uh, haptic interfaces. Actually, during the lockdown, I, I made a small experiment. I, I uh, uh, took a, a small vibration sensor and, and glued it to my finger. Uh, and essentially, I recorded, if you want, this mechanical uh, perturbation propagating inside my finger at two different places, uh, in the nail or in, in the uh, proximal phalange. And, and, and then, uh, actually, I'll let you hear what, what the recordings I made cor uh, uh, corresponding to uh, a, a, if you want, a rubbing a cork surface or tapping on it. Uh, so let's listen to that. And that's the tapping. And, and so that actually gives you another uh, um, idea of the sort of information that your brain receives when, when you interact with object. And here I gave the two canonical example, which is uh, 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 sliding and then tapping, uh, or collisions if you want. And, and, uh, um, and, and clearly uh, there is a lot of information contained in, in these uh, uh, signals. And once again, it's, it's quite amazing because what you actually feel is cork in, in the two cases. <coughs> and, and so uh, uh, also that also gives us hope that we can make uh, uh, haptic devices that uh, uh, who are reasonably simple and, and then, uh, despite these complexities and, and really interesting physics uh, would work very well. In, in, in uh, uh, this example here, like, uh, which was uh, arising for a collaboration with uh, Jean-Louis Tonard, uh, <coughs> we uh, um, were um, interested in, in, in um, giving an example that's very non-intuitive. Uh, uh, every textbook, and, and for uh, uh, more than, than a, a century and a half, uh, the, um, we're told that actually the uh, uh, quality of objects comes from their uh, uh, topography. Uh, so essentially, if you have a, a surface that's not perfectly smooth, it has a, a texture, if you want, like, like fabrics or wood or stone, that actually you experience the material through the, uh, this topography. <coughs> And, and here, we uh, just show that's perhaps true, but it's not, not all. The whole story is not uh, 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 complete. We actually took samples were perfectly flat. In that case, they were uh, optically flat, meaning that basically the flatness was at, at uh, uh, almost at, at atomic scale, so perfectly mirror. And, and then, uh, uh, but they were two. Samples, one uh, was made of glass and the other was made of plexiglass, which uh, is polymer. And, and, uh, uh, and they are both transparent, uh, but um, uh, we control for, for the visual inputs, we control for the thermal inputs also, so they, they were brought at the same temperature or they were brought at the temperature of the body. And yet people could tell them apart uh, uh, without seeing them, without feeling them thermally, Purely mechanically, they could tell actually that one was uh, they were different. They uh, uh, they were made of different materials, but there was no topography at all. And and, and then somehow the um, uh, discrimination uh, performance was um, uh, linked to the uh, uh, water content in the fingers of the people we asked to perform that task. Which is quite of interesting, and and uh, it points to a, 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 a really fundamental aspect of, of, of uh, the uh, tactile interaction, which is the role of water. Uh, if you are not using tools to feel things, and you use your skin directly, you actually touch the world through a, a material called keratin, and that keratin is actually the same. Uh, 
polymer that that uh, it's a natural polymer that uh, makes your hair. Uh, but the, it's a slightly different one on the fingers, but it's the same family, and and it has the property of being avid of water. So so essentially, if you put your hands in the water, then the keratin will absorb quite a large amount of water, and and. And, and if you don't actually, if you wave your hands in, in air, then you would actually dry it, it will evaporate. And, and, and so the water content changes uh, uh, dramatically through uh, fairly short time scales. And, and, uh, uh, <coughs> and that's a dramatic effect actually on, on, on the interaction you have with the world. And I'll show that uh, uh, in a in here, so essentially, what we're looking at here is is uh, uh, again um, imaging the contact that your finger is making with a sheet of glass at 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 the very initial moment. So the minute, the second actually, the millisecond you uh, you uh, touch a, she a sheet of glass, you would imagine or intuitively believe that actually the finger make a huge contact area, as we've seen in in uh, uh, earlier. Uh, slides, and but that's not the case actually. Here, the resolution of, of the uh, apparatus that that images that contact is, is quite good. It, it's uh, it's a high resolution, uh, uh, high quality camera with uh, many thousands of pixels on, uh, across, and and yet you can hardly see uh, this contact is very small. And and uh, what really happens here is a phenomenon was described by. Uh, Mike Adams from the University of, of Birmingham, which actually is 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 keyed into the role of water. Uh, our uh, bodies are um, wet essentially. They you have a sweat system to keep your body uh, alive and moist to uh, compensate for evaporation. But what happens is that when <laughs> the skin comes in contact with an impermeable surface like glass, the water gets trapped. And and the uh, 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 moisture content in in the keratin uh, uh, rises, and and the keratin has a, uh, um, a very special property. When it's dry, it's very stiff, uh, and it's more like like if you want like like bone, if you want. <clears throat> uh, but when it's wet, it, it's more like play doh. It, it's completely plastic. And, and the, the range of, of mechanical properties of keratin is, is uh, uh, quite uh, uh, large. It's like it's not a factor two. It's like like three orders of magnitude of change in its uh, mechanical properties according to the moisture content. So what happens here when you actually touch a uh, impermeable surface? Then then uh, the water gets trapped. The uh, keratin gets wet. It gets malleable, and the contact increase. And it takes, you know, it takes. Uh, uh, um, uh, it's a process that's very slow because it's most likely uh, a diffusion process, like like first order dynamics, with an asymptote that's that's uh, reached about uh, at about ten or twenty seconds, and and then uh, uh, <coughs> uh, creates that 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 really large contact, which in turn creates the the friction, but. Um, it's for glass, so 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 if you suppose you were touching wood, you'd have a completely different uh, uh, dynamics. Actually, suppose you would be touching paper, which is uh, water absorbent, then actually uh, 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 the contact would actually diminish through time, as opposed to increasing. So that gives you also an idea that actually our uh, 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 sense of touch capable of telling what you are touching not only because of, of, of the uh, mechanical interactions but the consequences of, of, of this uh, uh, physical chemistry uh, and the role of water uh, uh, as it migrates from the uh, body to the world and vice versa and, and, and so that's that's interesting and, and fascinating because you have no realization of it it's like the little crater I was uh, showing earlier you only feel the little point, you don't feel the crater. Uh, you, uh, when you feel glass, actually, you don't have no idea that actually the uh, uh, water is making such a dramatic effect, uh, uh, the contact. But, but to your consciousness, basically, to your feeling, it's, it's, just, it, it's glass. And that's what glass should be. It, it, should, it should actually do this kind of dynamics.
and and you can actually uh, 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 have an idea on on, on the uh, uh, importance of of, uh, of this phenomena for tactile perception. Here, in that article, we actually um, um, compared uh, the evolution of that contact on glass, which is at the top of the slide here, and it takes you know sixty seconds to be completely. Uh, 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 moisturized and, and have a full, full uh, 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 contact, but with a, a soft el elastomer, which in that case was a transparent el elastomer, so we could also image the contact. Then the contact made immediately, and and for a simple reason, it's because the uh, the dry skin or the dry uh, keratin, being very stiff, is actually capable of indenting the the surface. Uh, uh, for example, a rubbery surface or, or another person, actually. Uh, <coughs> and, and, and the contact's made immediately. Uh, there is no uh, wait for that, no, no waiting period, or there is no uh, this first order dynamics. <coughs> and that's, that's really uh, uh, also something that is uh, indicative of the type of, of object that you're holding, the material that you're holding, it is the way it is... Uh, the, uh, mechanical interaction changing through time and through the effect of, of, of trapping water. And, and, and of course, you can imagine the very large number of different cases that can take place, like you know, with fabrics, paper, wood. Uh, uh, for example, if you lay your hands on, on a simulated wood, uh, uh, which would fool the eye, you would believe, ah, oh, this is wood. You put your hand on it and immediately, I mean, it takes, it's, it's in milliseconds, you're your uh, nervous system realizes it's not wood, it's, it's actually plastic. Uh, and so it's a very, very effective, uh, uh, a very effective system, and then we um, uh, should not underestimate it. Uh, <clears throat> now, we heard these this, uh, sounds that, the, I mean, this uh, acoustic uh, perturbation that that contact make when you... you uh, uh, hold and, and rub objects. And then so, so with uh, Jan Wiesel here, uh, of, uh, who supervised that study, uh, from uh, <coughs> the University of, of uh, uh, California uh, at Santa Barbara, um, <coughs> we um, uh, actually recorded the whole hand uh, uh, activity. And, and, and so that's, that's quite remarkable. Actually, you when you behave, you normally, you now you grab things, you even grab a tool, uh, <laughs> then you have actually this tactile wave that propagates through the whole hand, and and then you could uh, imagine that well, it's not it's a, it's like a peripheral phenomenon. It has no behavioral importance. The nervous system will discount that uh, as as a perturbation. Uh, but there are uh, very good reasons to believe actually uh, that uh, uh, it is not the case. Uh, <clears throat> That actually, uh, uh, um, they are all important. They are all, all picked up by uh, 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 the, you, our tactile apparatus, if you want them, and, and then perturbations to them would actually modify your your uh, perception. <coughs> and so that's that's uh, uh, very interesting. It's uh, it's still an ongoing uh, uh, study, but but um, it also has uh, 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 important consequences in the way of thinking of haptic interfaces. <laughs> and again, again, it, it's, it's a, a violation of, of, of the uh, uh, assumption of locality. I mean, there's not, nothing really local in, in, in tactile uh, inputs. We talked about tools, and it's really an important case, of course. Uh, 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 tools are... Uh, uh, Part of the story, you cannot avoid them, especially when you're talking about haptic interfaces, because essentially that's what they are, they are tools. And, and then uh, I'll uh, take a few minutes to, uh, here to describe a, a recent study we, uh, we was actually conducted by uh, uh, Alessandro Farney from from Intel in Lyon. Uh, and, and then actually we were interested in a phenomenon which is... Uh, uh, Quite surprising, actually. If you if you hold a piece of wood, uh, it, it'll work better with wood, actually, which is a, a, so not not too small, not too big, so something like like between 
say, uh, 20 centimeters or a meter, say, that, that range here, something which is commensurate with your arm, actually. Uh, <coughs> and then uh, if, you, if you perturb that, that handheld tool, then, then and you ask people where, where actually have you been, has the tool been touched, they can tell very precisely where it is at the tip, near the hand, in the middle, uh, anywhere on the tool. And, and that's, that's really surprising because the tradition wants that actually when you hold tools, uh, uh, um, the sensation is distalized. I mean, in, in classic textbooks, or classic uh, uh, treaties on touch, uh, the example of the pen is, is, is given quite often and commented uh, numerous times. If you write with a pen on paper, then you actually feel the paper at the tip of the pen. Uh, uh, as if the pen uh, uh, was a, 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 a prolongation of your body and then would, if you want, prolong the, um, uh, your, uh, your um, um, finger uh, inside the tool, if you want. Uh, uh, so that's, that's what's called distalization. Like, like you, the sensation is no longer on your body. It's actually uh, away from the body at, at the distal uh, uh, location. And then there's a second possibility, actually, when you hold a tool, is, is that it would be projected, like essentially the sensation is either in your hand. If you attend to it, actually you can do that. If you pick up a pen now and then you play with it, then you can actually uh, um, uh, uh, attentionally drive your uh, uh, perceptual system to uh, uh, attend to the sensation on the hand or at the tip. But there is a third possibility, which is the embodiment. It means essentially the tool uh, in normal use, if there is no, uh, uh, if you want a, a, a strong uh, top-down effect from, from attention, then actually the tool becomes you, and not not in a, a motor way, like 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 it's it's been described in the literature, but also in a, a sensory way. And, and that's really uh, interesting and really important also to understand when we are designing or uh, making haptic interfaces that actually the object that you are in contact with can become uh, your body in a sensory way. <laughs> and, and that's really uh, 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 hard to explain. We explained it actually uh, um, because if you um, uh, hit, you create a collision on a piece of wood, then it will adopt, uh, uh, it will actually uh, oscillate, because it, it's an oscillator, actually, it's a beam, uh, and, and then the beam has very special dynamics, which are uh, uh, indicated here, and in fact, the uh, waveform that is created by an impact on the tool depends completely on the, uh, what we call initial conditions, that actually where the impact has occurred. So if, if it's proximal or distal on the wood, then you would have a different waveform, and very different. In fact, so different that um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a classic topic in mechanics. Uh, uh, it was the solution to the uh, uh, dynamic equation that governs sticks or uh, beams, if you want, was worked out by Euler a long time ago, and also Bernoulli. And what they found, actually, the natural frequencies of, if you want, the components of that vibration are in, in uh, uh, strange ratios, which are um, uh, indicated on the slide here. And the, the, um, what it means, essentially, uh, and what the diagram shows, which is very classical, you can find them in uh, any textbooks on, 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 on uh, uh, theoretical mechanics 101, uh, the modes are actually are excited uh, uh, differentially depending on, on where you hit or you, you uh, apply the impact. For example, here, if you uh, uh, apply the impact halfway at, at a bit uh, of, the, uh, of the stick, then the uh, mode uh, in blue, the mode number three, won't be excited, but you will excite maximally uh, the uh, mode number four. And the number four would be a fairly high frequency, which is not in harmonic ratios with the others, which, and, and the consequence of that is for you have a one-to-one -one map, if you want between initial conditions and, 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 and then the waveform. <laughs> and that's really, really uh, uh, interesting uh, because we do that spontaneously. I mean, our nervous system automatically decodes these uh, waveforms 
uh, uh, like it's so near, uh, and and then turn that into a, a sensation of location, which is uh, uh, um, totally sp spontaneous. It's not strain. It's something that you've learned uh, from from uh, your development. So on these uh, ideas that will terminate the session, I will be moving to the next. Uh, in this section, we're going to look at uh, um, uh, uh, um, a bit, a little bit into the uh, neuroanatomy or neurophysiology of, of the portion of our nervous system that, that's uh, 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 processing touch. It's, it's, it's called the somatosensory system. <coughs> Uh, it all starts with the skin, of course, and uh, we all know that there are uh, different type of skin. You have uh, a mucosal skin in the mouth and a wet skin if you want the lips, and you have the uh, hairy skin on most of your body, and and you have the glabber skin, which is the skin you have in your hands and feet, and that's the one that's. Uh, 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 appropriate for uh, uh, walking uh, or uh, holding objects and interacting with objects. It's it's uh, mechanically very capable, very tough, uh, and uh, it doesn't delaminate. Uh, it it's it's uh, ridged, uh, <coughs> uh, which has many consequences. We won't uh, discuss here, and. Um, and the glabrous skin is, is heavily uh, uh, innovated. It has lots of uh, uh, nervous receptors embedded in it. Uh, there are essentially two main kinds. Uh, uh, some that are tucked inside the papilla, or if you want the uh, prints which are on the opposite side, uh, inside uh, in the body here. So they are really close to the surface. Uh, to give you an idea, they are like about half or a millimeter or, or uh, maybe a little deeper, actually. Uh, and then you have an, another uh, um, population of receptors on, on, at the interface between the dermis and epidermis. <coughs> <coughs> and there are, uh, you have lots of them. Uh, the little um, diagram at the bottom of the um, slide here shows uh, little uh, uh, gray circles are these uh, uh, receptors and and uh, across one one ridge you have a, a free uh, two of them actually if you if you move across so which actually tells that in a millimeter square you would have uh, uh, about i would say yeah like like between 50 and 100 <clears throat> so it's it's a lot of them actually um uh, and then, and then you have sweat glands, uh, uh, which uh, are really important to keep you alive, uh, <coughs> and 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 has the, the function and the consequences that we discussed earlier uh, of of keeping the uh, uh, skin moist, uh, 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 independently from the ambient condition. But of course, the uh, hydration of the skin varies tremendously. Uh, according to whether you're uh, in contact with something or not, or, or whether you're in good health, or et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> and, and, and the glabrous skin is connected to the bones by a, a very heavy network of, of collagen fibers, uh, which actually fills most of the space in between the skin and the bone, uh, along with um, uh, the pulp, in which is a, a fatty a global fatty tissue, which gives these uh, grabbing properties that uh, we uh, looked at earlier, <coughs> and and uh, mechanoreceptors or these sensors, uh, they uh, fall into two categories uh, uh, that we uh, are indicated on the diagram here, and but there is a third which is not associated to the skin, but but in uh, in deeper tissues, uh, 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 it are shown in uh, green here, and are fairly large. You have a couple of hundreds in the hand of them, and they are really, really, really sensitive to uh, uh, waves. 
to vibrations propagating in the tissues uh, to an extent that is really, really remarkable. They work at the limits of physics, uh, so they <coughs> really pick up tiny, tiny little uh, perturbations applied to your body. <coughs> and you have them all over the body, in fact. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and they are uh, really interesting. Uh, well, uh, uh, they are particularly uh, uh, important when you use tools, of course, because the tools doesn't have the... Uh, contact mechanics that, that would drive this the surface receptors but, but still they will give you this uh, uh, sensation that are uh, uh, fundamental of course when you're thinking of haptic interfaces <coughs> so that that's the skin but of course the skin is not um, everything uh, it's like uh, uh, um, uh, in vision you can you can have an idea of the anatomy of the retina and the fact they are cones and, and, and rods but that doesn't tell you a lot about how vision works uh, and what vision can do uh, and it's the same in haptics if you know the physiology of these mechanoreceptors you learn very little actually about uh, how uh, the uh, somatosensory system works because you know you have billions of, of uh, uh, cells in the brain that will uh, respond to these mechanical inputs and these are the ones that will give you uh, sensations. <coughs> uh, uh, so that's... Uh, um, we can briefly look into uh, the organization at the periphery. In, in fact, these mechanoreceptors that you have in the skins and, of course, you get uh, also in other parts of the body, like like tendons and uh, and muscles, uh, but the one in the skin they they uh, connect to uh, 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 second order cells, if you want, like like the sec in a, in a neural net would be that like like the first layer, if you want, <coughs> and, and the way it's organized is that you have large uh, sections of your anatomy, like like for example a whole finger pad which would uh, collect information, uh, 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 the information would converge to a single cell. So that's, that's really uh, interesting. So it's not at all a one-to-one -one, uh, uh, correspondence. It's, it's like as if you have a cell that's looking at the, at, at the large regions, and then each region is scrutinized by a very large number of, of these uh, second-order cells. It, it's like in the thousands. It's it's really really interesting. Very different from uh, the way the visual system is organized, <coughs> or the auditory system for that matter. And and then uh, so that's a very quick uh, and and ultra simplified picture of how, at least at the periphery, uh, uh, information is collected and 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 transmitted to. Uh, the thalamus and, and brains and other uh, places in the brain like the basal ganglia and uh, cerebellum and, and, and eventually makes it to the cortex after, <coughs> after several stages of uh, transformations and and um, but uh, yeah so this this uh, nucleus that you have in in, in, the, in the brain stem which collects that peripheral information is 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 such that actually uh, it's capable of, of being sensitive to different type of inputs and that we've shown that uh, in vivo uh, and it's uh, really fascinating to see uh, uh, that actually the peripheral nervous system uh, is already a tremendously uh, capable uh, haptic processor <coughs> uh, and so we don't have time to uh, expand on that but that's a really uh, 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 interesting idea, but uh, 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 one thing which is relevant to uh, the uh, design of, of haptic interfaces is that um, these early early uh, stages of, of uh, tactile processing uh, uh, takes place very quickly, and, and so that's something we've seen in, in vivo actually is that uh, with a small number of neurons, like, like 10 or 20, uh, scrutinizing a, a, a piece of, of a region of skin, actually, uh, this um, uh, 
set of cells is capable of telling what, what was the input in a matter of milliseconds. And, and uh, so that's, that's really what uh, uh, is the lesson here. Uh, uh, the tackle system is really fast. It, it basically extracts information within 10 or 20 milliseconds. And, and essentially, that's the time course that a uh, tactile input should last to be significant. Uh, uh, and so that's, that's really uh, uh, useful to know. And it means that these 10 to 20 or 30 milliseconds have to be really subdivided into many steps, which uh, uh, gives you actually an idea of the temporal uh, resolution of the uh, tactile system which actually rivals the uh, uh, resolution of uh, the auditory system. <clears throat> and, and so that's, that's something to uh, keep in mind. Uh, when we design the uh, haptic devices, we have to uh, think of them uh, as, as essentially a, a, a temporal evolution uh, 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 that's mapped on space, of course, but, but, but the, the time scale is very short and, and, and it's very important to have transducers that are capable of, of um, obeying to, to this constraint. And, and so that's, that's really important and, and useful to know. Uh, to the next. In uh, this section, we're going to look at one aspect of, of, um, of perceptual behavior uh, when it comes to, to uh, haptics and, and touch. Um, it's, uh, there are many ways to study uh, perception, of course, but uh, uh, the illusions are really interesting, they're fun for, to start with, and, and they really give uh, uh, important insight in, in how actually our brains uh, turn uh, mechanical signals into um, you know, sensations and percepts in general. <clears throat> and so, of course, they are... Uh, uh, now, 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 it was uh, not clear a while ago, but it's now very clear that uh, there are lots of tactile illusions. Uh, uh, some are similar to um, illusions in other uh, sensing modalities. Uh, uh, some are very specific to touch, of course, because touch is a mechanical sense. It's not an acoustic sense, so it's not a visual sense, it's not an optical sense. And, and uh, it's not a vestibular sense, it's, uh, it, it's a sense on its own, and it has its own uh, uh, domain. And, uh, and there are lots of tactile illusions. Uh, some are uh, movement on the skin, movement of objects, uh, uh, sensation, sensations of weight and texture, and so on. It's really uh, it's incredibly rich. There is a lot of them, uh, and, and then many more to be discovered. Uh, <clears throat> and we'll, but we'll look at, at uh, just two or three of them. <clears throat> uh, uh, so this one is about shape, and, and, and it's it's really uh, not. We we tend to think of uh, um, um, uh, uh, illusions as wrong perceptions, but that's not a very good way to think of them. I, all all sensations are correct. There is no wrong and. Uh, uh, incorrect sensation. That is because sensation is a sensation is something that happens in your head, and and uh, it, uh, and and then it's somehow related to the physics of uh, that surround us. But they, uh, who is to tell what is right and what is wrong? It's 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 not it's not a good way to think. Actually, what what is more uh, uh, appropriate uh, is is uh, to think of illusions or as predictions made by your brain that are not uh, um, verified by, by the uh, uh, physical input. And that's, that's more, uh, more uh, correct, and it's probably uh, in line with uh, more modern uh, ways of uh, seeing how the uh, uh, brain actually uh, uh, comes, uh, comes up with, with uh, uh, percepts. Uh, it, it really is like a prediction machine. It, it, it uses context, past, uh, uh, to uh, uh, essentially predicts what should be uh, a, a, an input, whether it's uh, visual uh, uh, or, or uh, auditory or uh, uh, vestibular, actually, also, or uh, uh, tactile. 
And in illusion is actually when when the uh, 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 prediction actually violates uh, uh, what is actually felt, and, and that's that's what what makes an illusion. Uh, and you can adapt to uh, adapt to them. You can learn them. You can change them. It's really uh, it, it's really a rich terrain for uh, uh, for studying the dynamics and the uh, uh, brain processes which underlie uh, uh, sensation. But here is one, and then uh, uh, often it's 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 um, uh, intuitively it's accepted that if you have the shape of an object, essentially you run your fingers. On on the on the contours, and, and the trajectory of the contour tells you what the shape is, and it turns out uh, to be uh, not very true at all. Actually, it's a lot more interesting, and and uh, 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 <coughs> and actually uh, uh, more in line with actually this idea of, of predictive uh, sensations. So here we have a, a surface which is in, in white, uh, and and when you uh, and if you imagine that that surface has no friction, it's perfectly slippery, and then you have a finger which is running over it, then uh, uh, there is a, an interaction force in between your finger and and the object. If the object is is a, is a solid, uh, then um, and it has no motors inside. Then uh, of course the force is not created by the object. It is actually your motor system that does it because you have to push on it to keep in equilibrium. <laughs> and um, and so essentially your brain is aware that you uh, somehow maybe not consciously, certainly not consciously actually, but but there is actually this motor act which is necessary for your finger to be in equilibrium with the object that you are touching. And then so so what we did actually is is uh, isolate the finger from the object with, uh, using a little wheel that would actually uh, transfer that effort from the object to your finger, but remove the, the skin input if you want, because you would always feel the plate that would be uh, connected to that wheel. But the trick we used uh, actually is was to um, have an, a small electric motor that would be aware of, of where the wheel was in space and, and then create this red vector which actually would perturb the, the white vector that was created by the interaction of the wheel on, on the object to come up with that gray vector that actually your motor system would have to create to cause in order to keep the, in equilibrium. And, and, then so, uh, uh, and then we asked the participants, so what do you feel? And then, uh, actually, uh, uh, by manipulating that red vector, like so, what you can do, actually, is creating a uh, gray vector, the one that your motor system has to uh, generate, to correspond to a shape that's not the shape that you're actually interacting with. And so you, you could effectively turn a uh, bump into a, a hole in that manner, and it's very powerful if you um, um, don't see your hands uh, when they are uh, uh, interacting with that uh, uh, real or virtual shape. Then, then uh, your uh, sensation is absolutely perfect. There is no uh, way you can tell that actually your finger is actually moving up in space when in, in reality it's moving down. And that's really powerful. And and uh, it's the basis of many effects that are used today uh, to create uh, 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 haptic interfaces uh, from uh, with electric motors or electric actuators or, or others, which basically the principle is, is always the same. You have you associate a, uh, a mechanical response to a particular motor output, and, and then. Uh, uh, and then your, the brain will actually uh, anticipate, or it will actually predict a sensation. And if the sense, if the um, connection is correct, then you'll have a perfectly spontaneous sensation that is as good as the real, actually. <coughs> but but the conditions would, could be quite different. So that's how you create uh, uh, click buttons and uh, 
even texture and stuff like that. You, there's a lot that you can do uh, uh, using exactly the same uh, principle. Uh, uh, <coughs> and there are also aspects also of this idea of shape. Uh, so of course we cannot go through all these different cases, but there is one that's that's quite informative. Uh, 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 you can also create shape by simply uh, uh, doing this little uh, trick here. You have a little robot which actually is, is, is on, on wheels, so you can push it sideways. Uh, uh, and, and back, backward, forward, sideways in the, in the plane. But and there is a servo mode, two servo motors that are actually orienting the plate as a function of your own movement, in such a way that the plate would actually roll on the fingertip without slip. In uh, and 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 give you a tactile input that's essentially the tangent to a virtual object uh, uh, that you would be. Uh, interacting with, but in fact your finger is not moving uh, in uh, uh, vertical direction. It's uh, only, it's actually uh, uh, moving under your own volition, so you know what what the trajectory is, and, and then you receive a mechanical input that's, that uh, correlates to a, a certain object. And then I, I can tell you that actually you feel curvature uh, uh, very well this way, uh, as good as, as, as if it was a real object <laughs> and, and with the same uh, discriminative power, if you want. And so, so that's, that's really interesting. They are, uh, uh, it, it's really the same uh, reasoning. There are uh, ways to use that effect actually in, in uh, wearable haptics. That's, that's uh, something that can be done because you basically have to move a plate on the fingertip as you move your hand in space to have the sensation of shapes and um, and it tells a few things actually we uh, had a model with uh, 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 Astrid Capers and collaborators on, on on the significance of that and and, uh, and it really shows that actually your uh, uh, haptic system is, is uh, uh, collecting information at different uh, scales and they correspond to different derivatives of, of, of uh, a displacement. Uh, whether it's, it's displacement and that corresponds to basically objects which are uh, commensurate with the size of your arm and, and, and uh, uh, when the object's curvature becomes higher, so you have smaller objects that are commensurate more with the size of a finger, then it's no longer the dis, uh, zero order information that's important. It's first order information that we've just seen, and and then when uh, the object gets even smaller, the curvature becomes higher. Then then uh, 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 curvature is is the source of information for shape, and that's really interesting because it gives you a, a scale space uh, uh, in which you can think of of uh, uh, haptic uh, uh, devices according to to uh, the uh, scale of objects that you would like to represent. And then we'll terminate that, that section with a, um, a comment on what uh, Marina said uh, at the introduction, that actually if uh, sensors work together and, and uh, it's, uh, um, the, uh, each sense sensing modality has, has, has its own power. It's, there's no hierarchy. Some, they are simply evolved to solve different problems and different physics <coughs> that help us to uh, uh, behave, uh, uh, eat, and, and survive, uh, and, and enjoy. And, and uh, um, uh, but there are common uh, uh, effects, if you want, from from uh, sensing modality to an, another. And one of them is is the uh, phenomenon of adaptation, meaning that if you have a persisting input, a uh, persistent quality like color, an illumination, uh, a, 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 a sound, a certain uh, pitch, and then you actually adapt to it. And, and then if you uh, 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 remove that, that uh, input, then you, uh, you would actually experience an after effect, which is the opposite in, in the perceptual space of that sensation. Like, like if you look at the at the uh, red patch for a long time, which is well Ill illuminated, and then you lay your eyes on white surface, then you'll see a green patch for a while, 
and that gives you a time scale, uh, which is uh, important to understand how the perceptual system uh, adapts. <coughs> and that, that's true for motion, and motion can, uh, uh, you adapt to motion uh, on the skin, and you can adapt to motion on the retina. And wh what that study shows is actually if you adapt to motion on the retina, then you'll have an after effect on the skin. And if you adapt to motion on the skin, then you'll have an after effect on the retina. I mean, uh, I'm using uh, not very scientific terms here, but uh, uh, you know what I mean. It's like like you have sensations that are of motion which are cross-modal. <laughs> and, and, and so that's very uh, uh, important whenever you design uh, 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 interfaces in general that you have to pay attention to all uh, 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 sensing inputs because they're all actually uh, put together by your brain to uh, create a, an, a, a particular uh, experience. And they, uh, none of them should be neglected and it's very, uh, uh, it's really an important part which has been, as, as I repeat, illustrated in many, many different ways uh, across the um, history of, of uh, uh, perception science. And uh, I'll terminate on, on this uh, 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 experiment here, which is basically uh, an illustration that the brain uses a tremendous amount of priors, like, like prior knowledge that it has about what, how the world should behave. And there are many of them, and they are, uh, they are associated to uh, the physics that are, uh, uh, surround us, like the, the way things uh, happen normally. And, and of course, uh, a, a very important uh, uh, property of the world around us is that we are all immersed in a gravity field, so, so objects always fall. And they all fall in the same way as Galileo uh, showed uh, centuries ago. And, and so basically this uh, acceleration of gravity is a really important prior that your brain has uh, internalized, it's been shown many ways, uh, in order to be able to solve perceptual problems uh, uh, efficiently. Uh, and and um, uh, here's an example here, you have a stick and inside the stick you have a, a, a vibrator and a, um, a transducer if you want that will make this uh, stick vibrate according to a signal, and the signal actually uh, uh, imitates the uh, vibration that would create a ball rolling down uh, uh, the stick when it's inclined. And, and it, of course, the ball is virtual, you cannot see it, but because it's, uh, it looks like a stick, you could accept that actually it's hollow and that there's an object inside. And, uh, uh, and so the diagram actually shows that the rolling noise it basically has a very important uh, simple uh, property that uh, the velocity will increase linearly with time if the angle is constant. And that's what Galileo uh, showed a long time ago. And, and all objects around us, if they roll, they do that. <coughs> and and, and uh, uh, if you uh, uh, simulate it, then you have a, a very uh, spontaneous uh, I've never seen any exception, actually. Spontaneous transformation, uh, perceptual transformation of that unidimensional signal, which is uh, a vibration, into a sensation of place. So you really can tell where that ball is inside the tube uh, as you move it around, as you uh, change the inclination of the stick, then you can actually tell where the ball is. And, and it's, it's not, it's not, there's no cognitive invo involvement. It's completely spontaneous. I've never seen any exception. Uh, it's very robust and, and, and really uh, shows that actually when you design interfaces, you really have to obey these, these priors that your brain has learned from the day you're born and, and integrated and, and then relies on, on, in order to make sense of, of the uh, uh, sensory inputs. So with that in mind, I'll move to the next uh, 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 section. So we'll uh, uh, <coughs> finish this, uh, uh, terminate this uh, webinar by um, a few comments on, on, on uh, haptic technology and, and how 
these ideas map onto uh, physical devices. I, I'll just want to spend a little time to comment on on one device that was uh, uh, serves an enormous service. It's it's basically it was a it is actually a, a, a system that um, takes advantage of, of a, a, a good understanding on, on, on contact mechanics and how contact mechanics drive the uh, mechanoreceptors in the skin. Uh, and but that, uh, so basically, you have a, an array of, of 64 uh, piezoelectric bandes uh, packed into a centimeter square active surface which actually is capable of, of giving you a very uh, detailed uh, and, and uh, realistic, actually, uh, uh, tactile sensation at the fingertip. But it's interesting from the uh, uh, different viewpoints. Um, this device was uh, scientifically incredibly successful. The uh, very large number of, of, of uh, really cool papers came out of, of its use and, and and also uh, um, understanding also very good uh, application like like Vincent Levesque actually in his uh, uh, PhD did a, a wonderful application of that device to creating tactile drawings for uh, 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 textbooks for uh, um, uh, uh, people who are blind uh, uh, or, or kids actually kids who were learning. Uh, in school and, and would need to have um, uh, raised drawing and then the idea was to repose, uh, replace the uh, raised uh, drawings on paper by, by um, uh, uh, technological uh, I mean, uh, display that, that would be programmable and, and that actually worked wonderfully. What didn't work, and that's interesting, is the industrialization. We, we actually attempted to industrialize that system uh, Two or three times in different ways uh, for different purposes, uh, but each time was the same problem. It's too complicated and too expensive. Uh, uh, it, so, so it's, it's really interesting. It's technically very su successful, scientifically excellent, but it just didn't make it as a, uh, a viable uh, uh, product, and, and and simply because it's too complicated, and the numbers are too small. So, so. Uh, so that's 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 really a big lesson. And uh, at, at the company at Actronica, we actually looked at, at different ways to uh, 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 create uh, uh, sensation of dynamic touch, which which is actually uh, the, the most, um, if you want, industrially uh, uh, accessible and the most useful and the web that really can. We used to make really great interfaces that are uh, <coughs> easy to use and, and, and uh, pleasant to touch, and 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 and, and um, uh, technically sufficiently uh, uh, mature to be able to turn to be turned into products. So we look at all different ways, uh, and that table here looks at, at different transducer ideas that can be used to create dynamic touch. Uh, uh, and, and then we really focused on, on, on one, which is essentially the uh, uh, electrodynamic transducer, you know, which basically is, is a, a prime mover based on, on, on uh, Lorentz force uh, for many reasons, because uh, it's well understood and it's um, uh, industrializable. Uh, um, it, it, it's possible to be mass manufactured and, and actually if it's well used you can uh, use it to uh, all kind of for different ends so so it's really a, a, a useful transducer it's not something that is um, uh, if you want confined to a, a, a very small uh, uh, sector <clears throat> and so so I, I, I could spend more time commenting on all the different techniques that are uh, 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 apply today to 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 create uh, 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 haptic interfaces, but really the uh, uh, electrodynamic transducer is is really what we focused on. We also worked uh, uh, on, on right now on on uh, on piezoelectricity, which has its own 
advantage and limitations, but, but uh, in certain cases, that's, that's really uh, uh, also the way to go. <clears throat> Actually, Actronica, we're not uh, 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 wedded to a particular uh, transducer technology. We are uh, mostly interested in creating uh, good interfaces, and, and, and whatever uh, a transducer uh, does the job, we'll use. Uh, so that's not that's really what what uh, we're about, and um, uh, but but really for the electrodynamic motors we've developed uh, 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 devices that really are, uh, are really good. They have all the properties that uh, are important, like like their uh, mechanical uh, uh, time constant are very short, so they are really appropriate for. All the reasons we uh, talked about, we can create all kind of effects uh, with them, uh, uh, provided that you they are used uh, uh, appropriately. And we've made them in different form factors. There is the one I'm showing here is the standard model that when we typically use to develop prototypes because uh, it's actually uh, already manufactured uh, in large quantities and it's 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 working at the uh, Limit of physics, so there is probably very little improvement that can be made to it. Uh, uh, you know, it's really uh, uh, almost at the asymptote, and it. But but that's what it is. But we've also uh, developed uh, other types of uh, actuators with different form factors and, and different uh, 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 magnetic arrangements, which are appropriate for uh, special applications. <laughs> and and so with that. I will uh, 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 thank you for having listened to that we uh, webinar, and and then I'll be uh, uh, taking questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vincent, for this presentation, and thank you to all the participants. I hope that this conference was insightful for you. You will be able to watch and watch again this webinar on Actronica's YouTube channel. We will, uh, of course, uh, send you the, the link. Now, I'm sure you have many questions for Vincent. So to join uh, the live Q&A, click on the link in the description of this video below. Bye, everyone, and thanks again.